Hmm. Any question anyone has, leave all this foolishness, nonsense. Don't say later, I'm not asking you if you have any questions. You, you have a question? So you're so empty, you don't even have questions. That's what you say. Mashallah. He not only emptied his cup, he broke his cup. <coughs> Coming cupless. <coughs> yes? So what are you saying? Uh, I'm asking uh, how we can empty it to the best we can. How we can to make sure that it's not filled. To make sure that it's not filled, how do you come empty? You come empty. I know when people come empty. Because they're listening like this. Even if they hear a thousand times or so, and they're listening, their eyes are open and they're listening. I know when they're full and they close it. And so that happening there. Like this. You understand? Yes. Simple, simple explanation. Simple explanation. Are people really listening to Sohbet or not? Because there is something there for you, directly for you. Something that you went through in the week. Well, this weekly Sohbet is given. You are going through a difficult situation or a tight situation or a question or an issue it is in the software you have to look for it you listen and you have to figure things out we listen to Sheikh and he giving sohbet we don't just listen we listen and we are we heard this before why is Sheikh and he using this word instead of this word what is the why is he into you you go through it you things are put into the cup and you look at it. Things are put into the cup and you look at it. You are not passive. You're very active. Sohbet doesn't mean you're passive. People are thinking sohbet is just being passive. Submission is being passive. Samina wa ta'ana, we're here, we obey, is being passive. There is nothing that is so active as sacrificing everything and submitting. It requires the most active thing. To be passive, is to let your ego and shaitan to take control. That is passive. We're living in this world, it is not a spiritual world. To step on your ego and to close the doors to shaitan is the most active thing that you can ever do, the most difficult thing. That's why Tasawuf is called what? The Jihadul Akbar. It's the biggest uh, struggle. You understand? So how are people active in this into Sohban? Are they active or no? It's not just for you, it's for others too. Maybe there is something there that because somebody asked you, your friend, so many people now have friends, huh? hundreds of friends, subhanAllah. And I look at their Facebook account, I'm watching thousands of friends they have. Hmm. You're going to be responsible for that too in the Ahir Zaman. On judgment day, it's even going to be worse because Allah is going to say, you have so many friends, Watch which ones of my words of Haq, which ones of the words of Haq of my Prophet, of the Awliya Allah, of my friends, did you try to give? Especially if we are living in a non-Muslim country. And we have a lot of friends out there. How much are we giving? How much are we thinking of them? How much are we praying? It doesn't mean now everyone is going to give da'wah. I understand, but it is very active. So people have friends, but maybe there is a question there for the people that are around you that you're going to find the answers in the sohbat. So you have to be active. How the Sabi Kiram, they listen to the sohbat? They were so still, but it wasn't dead still. They were still, but they were as still as, you know, when you are when you're pulling the, the arrow, right? the arrow has to be completely still for a split second before you can, if it's moving, you cannot sh pull it back, no? If it's moving, you cannot let go. It has to be completely still, but it's still for a reason. 
That's exactly how the Sahabi Kiram would describe us. They were always ready, like arrows being pulled. One word from the Prophet they fly and they do. But they don't fly and they do just because they say, Chef, and they sing, now take that, everyone flying to take it. If you say, open the door, 10 people jumping up to open, eh, very good, at least you're awake. But now instead of opening the door, you're going to take the door out. You don't know what to do. That means that you have to think and you have to understand what your share is speaking about. Not at that moment before. If you're understanding, if you're going behind, if you are behind his words, behind his sohbat, if you're trying to understand, he will give you the understanding. And that time you're not going to go at it with gaflat either, blindly. You understand? You will know what he means. That time he doesn't have to say so much, you will know what he means and what he wants. That time he doesn't have to say at all. He can just indicate and you know because you're on the same page, because you're paying attention to him like this. You're not just sitting and being in gaflat, you understand? That time, yes, then that time the heart starts to work. That time he may not even signal. You connect yourself to your shah and you know. You understand? And you know what you're supposed to do. Because then that time you're going to say, I'm going to um, enter into this place not as myself, to just sit back and enjoy. I'm going to enter into this place to serve my Shah. You understand? To serve, to make things better for him. Now you're going to enter, you're going to do, you're going to think, you're going to say according to your Shah's eyes, according to his tongue, according to his ears, according to his hands. And then once you start doing that, you are going to be in Rabita with your Shah. You are going to be in Murakawa in your Shah. Yes. People are talking about so much nonsense, they're not even taking from the most basic number one level. They're not taking from that, but they're jumping and they're destroying everything. Very easy, people talking about fanafillah. You not even you don't even understand that. You cannot even be with um, uh, on the same page the same communications with your Shaykh at that time. How are you going to know? Yeah. You understand? <coughs> so, those are the things then that we need to do. How are you going to do it? How are you going to get it? You're going to get it during the Sohbat. You're going to get it during the Sohbat. You're going to get it during your meals. When you're eating, sharing the table, the Safra with the Shaykh. Then you're going to watch, then that time you want to eat, but you have to watch, you have to think about everything. Then you'll be able to do your work properly. Because our tariqat is based on sohbat. If you're not present during the sohbat, look, sleeping. Wait, I'm going to fix it. Sleeping. We're speaking. And start throwing people out from this association. First class, second class, third class. See, I'm speaking to him, I'm saying he's sleeping, he's doing that intentionally because the shaitan is making him to do it. So, hmm, that's okay, some people they don't know, some people they know. Be empty, but you must know what you need to take out, you understand? You're sitting down. Okay, what is Chef Andy going to speak about today? Oh, he's telling this. Ah, I've heard this before. You shut off? No. You say you've heard it before. The heart, your heart, filled with wrong things maybe. Oh, I heard this. Throw it out. Say, maybe I never hear this before. Something else that he's showing. Definitely it is. If you think saying the same thing over and over again doesn't mean anything, then why the, are we making zikr? Why are we repeating the name Allah, Allah, Allah millions of times? If by repeating it doesn't mean anything. Why are we repeating our prayers? Why are we repeating anything? Why are we repeating eating, drinking, going to the bathroom? Do it one time. 
Oh, food I ate before. Nobody says that, right? Breakfast? Oh, yesterday I had breakfast. I don't need breakfast. Same thing. Nobody thinks. But when it comes to associations, the ego behaves in a different way. So start thinking. At least to think that way, something will open for you. You will come out from the gufflet. Things will start working for you. It will be easier for you, for your zikr, for your prayers, for everything. Because at least you're taking that one step in this Ahir Zaman. You're trying to do something. But if you're just being stubborn and lazy and in gufflet, then nothing is going to change. You can be sitting there listening to sohbet for 20 years. You're not going to take two steps. And there are so many people who are like that. Yeah? So, the khutbah. What is the khutbah about today? Let's see who is sleeping and who is awake. Huh? What is the khutbah about today? The salvation and the support that they have. Don't think about that. Think first about the sacrifice they have to give. You're still stuck. If you sacrifice, this is what you're going to get. Don't. You understand? Be very careful about what you say and how you say it. Don't think, oh, no, no, English is not my first language. No. People never get confused when they say, I want something. They're very clear, right? If you're hungry and you say, I want something or you want something, it's very clear. But why it comes to when you're explaining something that you believe deep down inside, you get mixed up and you come up with excuses on top of that. I'm not necessarily talking about you. So many people, they are like that. Oh, you got me wrong. I meant to say this, this and this. But people never confuse their words when they want something to eat or they want something from this dunya. They don't think about their sacrifice, then they got this. No. It is about their sacrifice. So what about their sacrifice? So what? What is the lesson there? What did you learn? Huh? Flipping. You? Do you know? Sleeping. Sen? What is the lesson? What did you learn? You? Because of your belief, you have a great faith of which to learn and they prevail. The ayat is for you who believe, believe, and the description of the believers and looking to see whether we fit into that description or not. And the examples, extreme examples given about the Battle of Badr, when they believe and they uh, make an oath to the Prophet And what did they say? We believe in you. We will follow you. What is the thing that jumps out from that thing that they say? The oath. Let's see if anyone remembers. Say. Even if you lead us to the sea, we will follow you. Did they say we will follow you because we will get Janet? Did they say that? Did they say we'll follow you because our dunya is going to be easy, our ahirat is going to be easy? Did they say we'll follow you and we're going to get rewards, we're going to get blessings? Did they say we're going to follow you because we know that we're going to be victorious? They didn't. You understand? They're not asking for anything. They say, we believe in you. You stand for haq. Lead us to truth. Even if you lead us to the sea, we will follow you. So, the lesson there, to check our faith. For that, check our faith. Why we have faith for? why we have faith. For what reason? If we think that we have faith, 
because we deserve Jannat, we deserve a good life here and hereafter, think again. Why you have faith? Belief is faith, isn't it? So what do we believe in? What did the Sahabi Kiram do you believe in? Prophet So we should believe in the Prophet. Everything is given up for him, not for us to get something in return. The martyrs of Chanakala, they didn't say we're going to be martyred and we're going to get high stations. They did not go into the battle for that. They did not think of the rewards of the blessings. They go there to defend the Khilafat, to defend the Prophet. Khilafat means the maqam of the Prophet. Isn't that what it means? Because the Khalifa is representing the Prophet. So they were there defending. And so many of them, yes, they went to their deaths just believing. They did not say, we're going to enter, we're going to stand up for truth because we know that we're going to get jannat or rewards. So we need to look, what is our faith? Why we have faith? Why? Now, following the Prophet, we have to find someone who is following the Prophet. We found that, Sahib will save. So, we need to check now. If you don't do this, you don't do it at least sometimes in a week. Your comings and goings, your up and down praying, your fasting, your, it will become dry, it will become robotic. They will not have any sweetness in it. Everyone who first takes bayat, and if they're strong, they find so much sweetness in it because they're looking at it because it is new. But you know what? Your bayat is always new. Because your religion is always new. Because Prophet ﷺ always says, what? Renew your religion. So if you're caught in a situation where you think, oh, everything's just becoming a habit, Everything is becoming old. Everything is just repeating itself. Something must be wrong with you. Not with the Prophet. Not with Allah. Because you are not renewing your religion. You're not looking at it as if it is new. It is not as if it is new. It is new. You're not looking at the sohbats like it is new. You're saying this is old. It is the same. So, wake up with the expectation that it is a new day and Allah has favored us again with Islam and Iman and be thankful and Prophet Islam says if you cannot cry meaning cry for the sake of Allah force yourself to cry you understand? if you don't feel that you want to do something good for the sake of Allah, force yourself to do that good thing. These days people are thinking to do something good, they cannot force. Because there's no force in religion, there's no compulsion, so I'm not going to force. And they let the ego uh, to run loose. But the ego is going to do things and it is forcing the spirit down, stepping on the spirit, killing the spirit. So which ones are we forcing now? So, you're not feeling it, feel it. Force yourself to. It's going to come, inshallah. As much is enough. Fatiha.